is Alex. I'm going to be guiding you tonight in this practice. Um, if you can't hear me, let me know. I'm on my phone, so I will go up and check it if I need to. I know we're having some technical difficulties um, in certain places, but I hope you're all ready tonight to flow. I've got a nice um, practice ready for us tonight and just a couple things that I wanted to go over. If you do have any props with you, your mat will be just perfectly fine, but if you do have additional props like a blanket or if you have blocks, please feel free to use them. I very much encourage people to use blocks, even if you're advanced, because that way it allows you to just open up a little bit deeper, get you know your wingspan open, props you up. I always like to say to let the ego go because with the blocks, sometimes people are like, oh, I'm okay, I can do that. But the blocks really go a long way in helping us. I will start by asking, and I'm just gonna double check. Does anybody have any injuries that I need to know about? Or if this is your very first time doing yoga, can you just let me know? Okay. Seems like everybody's good to go. I will just preface this by saying, if at any point you feel like you need to modify, slow down, relax, reset, that's totally fine. I'm gonna just continue going. I will definitely show variations of poses so that way everybody feels comfortable and you're working at your own levels. Don't feel like you have to keep up with me if you need to go a little bit slower or if you're really advanced and this is not the first time that you're practicing, maybe you've been practicing for a number of years, feel free to move into additional advanced poses that really suit your body. That's the biggest thing is that we wanna be in tune with what our body's telling us. So if it's saying slow down, slow down. If it's saying rest, just pause and go into child's pose. And then if it's pushing you to maybe get a little bit more open tonight and work in some advanced postures, have at it. I want you to have fun. This is all about a self-healing month of gratitude, owing it, paying homage to ourselves. So what better way to do that than to get started with a nice flow. So I want everybody to come to a nice, comfortable, easy seated position on their mat. If you typically are like me and cross your legs with the left in and then right over top, I want you to flip that tonight and just kind of do a little bit of an opposite cross leg position. Make sure your spine is nice and tall. And I want you to just begin to close your eyes. We're gonna take five nice deep breaths. I want you to breathe through your in through your nose and then out through your nose. This is gonna allow us to get the mind to quiet down, to focus on our breath, which is very important throughout our asana practice, and also just to release any tension or stress that we might have. So come into that nice, comfortable seated position, spine nice and straight. If you want, you can give your shoulders a little tug up towards your ears and then release them back down your spine so that they're away and feeling relaxed. You can keep your palms up to receive or down for grounding and we're just gonna begin to breathe. And we're staying here for five breaths. And don't rush this practice. Don't rush this part of the practice, the beginning. This is really where we're trying to get the mind to focus, to quiet down, focusing on our breath. And as we're seated here together, I want you to set an intention for today's practice. And that intention is solely up to you. We're not here to all be on the same level. Maybe for this practice, you just wanna get a little bit more flexible. Maybe you wanna let go of some stress. Maybe you wanna see what your potential is on the mat. Or maybe you've just had a really bad day and you don't wanna think about it and you wanna let go. We're here for everything. So whatever your intention is, focus on that and use that as your catalyst to get you through this practice by breathing in, and exhaling out any negative toxic areas that we no longer want a part of us. So one more breath in and exhale. We're gonna begin by doing some neck circles, nice, easy, and light. We're gonna start on the right side and just 
tilt your head down and kind of circle it all the way to the right, to the back, slowly to the left, coming back to center and doing this two more times at your own pace. And once you've done three on the right side, I want you to come back to center and start moving to the left. And again, do three on the left. And don't forget to breathe. We're still breathing here in and out through your nose. Slowing down our breath, really trying to center our minds, thinking about our intention. And when you're ready, come back to center and move into tabletop position. When we're in tabletop, I want your shoulders to be in line with your wrist and your hips to be in line with your knees. You should be a shoulder width distance apart. So it's pretty much two fist width distance. And we're gonna begin by doing some cat cows. So we're gonna breathe in for cat, stretching our spine all the way up to the top, tucking our chin and exhale for cow by dropping the belly, rounding the spine and looking up. Four more times, inhale for cat, really feel that stretch. And exhale for cow. And you can feel free to move at your own pace, inhaling for cat, really arching that back, feeling the tuck of your chin. Exhale for cow. Feeling the opposite stretches happening where they need nice little counter stretches. And one more. Inhale for cat. And exhale for cow. Coming back to a nice neutral spine. We're gonna do something that's a little advanced. If you feel like you don't have the balance, feel free to use a block to support your hands. If you want to just stay in this position with one leg raised or maybe kind of working like this and not really doing the tucks that we're going to do a little bit of an ab workout, feel free to do whatever fits your body best. But on an inhale, I'm going to have you raise up your right arm and extend your left leg. Now this should be a straight line. You should be looking kind of down at your mat in front of you. Your neck should not be bent or up. You want to also flex your foot and keep your arm nice and straight so it's like a nice T shape. On an inhale, we're gonna bend and connect our elbow to knee and exhale, release back into that straight line. We're gonna do this a few times, just warming up the body. Inhale, knee to elbow, exhale, release. Knee to elbow. Exhale, release. One more time. Knee to elbow, hold it there for three, two, one. Exhale, straighten out the arms. You can hold here and maybe lift up another inch or two, or if you're feeling flexible, you can bend your left knee, reach your right arm back, and just lift your thigh up. You don't wanna pull on your arm. You wanna lift straight up into the air for a nice little, Stretch across the body and on the exhale, release back into that position and then back down to a neutral tabletop position. We're going to do the same thing on the left side. So when you're ready, inhale your arm, your left arm up, your right leg up, flex the foot. Stay here for a breath and on the inhale, elbow to knee. Straighten back out. And exhale, elbow to knee, elbow to knee, and exhale, straighten out. Two more, elbow to knee, exhale, straighten. One more time, hold it here for three, two, one. Straighten out those legs. And remember, you can either hold it here, lift up another inch for a little additional stretch, or bend your right leg, reach your left arm around, lifting up with your thigh and feeling that twist across the body. 
And when you're ready on the exhale, releasing back to where we started, back down to tabletop position. Now I want you to sit back on your feet, nice and easy. Spread the legs wide so that your knees are touching the outer edges of your mat. And you're gonna slowly just walk your hands down to one of my favorite positions, which is <clears throat> anytime you feel like you need to come to a rest, this is where you're gonna come. This is child's pose. Our arms are extended and we're just stretching out our back. We're gonna stay here for a couple breaths. Continuing to think about our intention for class today. Letting go of anything that doesn't serve us. We're gonna be opening up our hips tonight, as well as our chest, really focusing on that root chakra, which is at the base of our spine. Hi, as can well, I call you right back, Christina? As well as our heart chakra. Thanks. On an inhale, I want you to lift up your right arm. Just kind of open up your chest, giving it a nice stretch, and then thread your right arm underneath of your left. This is called thread the needle. We're just gonna stay here for two breaths. If you want a little bit of an extended stretch, you can also lift up your left hand straight up and then just kind of bend it back towards your right hip. This will allow you to open your body up a little bit more. On the exhale, come back to center. Lift that right arm up for one more stretch and coming back to neutral child's pose. We're gonna do the same thing on the left. So when you're ready, inhale your left arm up. Exhale, thread it through your right arm, feeling that twist in the side body. And again, if you want an additional stretch, you can lift your left arm up and bend it towards or your right arm up and bend it towards your left hip, really opening up your chest. You can also feel this in your upper arms and your back. And on the exhale, coming back to center, right arm down, lifting our left arm up one more time. Resetting back to child's pose. And when you're ready, moving back into tabletop position, and then flipping our toes and moving into our first downward dog. Now we're gonna stay here for five breaths. We're gonna take it slow in the beginning just to kind of wake up the body. I want you to really kind of focus on your alignment here. Your hands and your feet should be equally supporting your body. It should not just all be in your wrists or all be in your feet. The goal is to really try to get your your heels of your feet as close to the ground as you can, but please don't hurt yourself and kind of overextending. Really focus on your hips being back, your inner ankles and your inner thighs kind of opening towards the center, which is gonna allow your hips to shoot up and you wanna kind of push into that spot. So try to avoid being here or even here, really wanna root down into the four corners of our body and just stay here for five breaths. If you wanna wiggle around, maybe shift your hips back and forth. If you wanna bend one knee and the other, feel free to do whatever serves you best and allow you to be as flexible as you need to be. On your next inhale, I want you to walk your toes up towards your hands, take as many steps as you need. Try to keep your legs as straight as possible. Really just feeling the stretch in your body. And I just want you to hang in a forward fold. Now you have a couple options here. Keep your feet hips width distance apart. You can either keep your hands on the ground Use a block if you need to support yourself up a little bit if you can't stretch all the way down. You can also 
rest your hands on your calves, or if you want some additional stretching, you can try bending the right knee, placing the right arm down and lifting up the left, and then rotate back and forth. So you can feel both sides on each side body. And when you're ready, we're gonna inhale all the way up to standing Tadasana pose. Now I'm gonna shift my perspective so that you guys can see me from the front because the next couple of moves that we're gonna do, you need to be able to kind of understand the alignment. So I wanna make sure that everybody will be able to see me and understand how this pose will begin. So you should have both feet together, standing nice and tall, spine nice and straight. You wanna reach all the way up above your head, kind of place your hands together in a steeple position. And we're gonna do Bikram half moon on the right and the left. So what I want you to do before we start is kind of just take your body and start to wiggle it back and forth. This is gonna allow us to loosen up the areas that we need. And when you're ready, come to center. On an inhale, we're gonna shift our hands to the right and our hip out to the left and just hold it here for two breaths. Looking out underneath of our left hand. When we're ready, come back up to center. We're gonna do the same thing on the left. Just stick that right hip out, bending into our left side body, holding and coming back to center. We're gonna do our first back bend of the day in standing Tadasana. So I want you to drop your head back and just kind of push your hips forward. See as how far you can go. Don't overextend, this is the first one we're doing today. And when you're ready, come back up to neutral and fold forward. Just kind of feel that stretch. If you want, you can clasp your hands behind your back, rinse out your shoulders. Feel the release. You should feel this in your hamstrings. When you're ready, put your hands on the ground in a forward fold. We're gonna halfway lift. Come back down to a forward fold and drop back into our first chaturanga. It's really important to keep your core tight in a nice straight line. If you're not comfortable with this or you have not practiced, I suggest you drop to your knees, keeping your core tight. Think knees, chest, chin. So drop knees, chest, chin, moving up into upward facing dog and then back down into downward facing dog. Or if you're comfortable just flowing through, but keep your arms and elbows close to your body and tight. And when you're ready, we're gonna walk through the same process again, straight legs all the way up to our hands. This time, we're gonna move a little bit quicker. So halfway lift, forward fold, standing mountain pose in Tadasana. I'm gonna face you guys so you can see me. Bikram half moon on the right, two breaths. Coming back to center, moving to Bikram half moon on the left, right hip out. Head should be focusing up towards the sky. Don't forget to breathe. Coming back to center, moving into our second back bend. When you're ready, drop the head, move your hips. You should be a little bit more open. See how much further you can get. On the exhale, folding forward. Halfway lift, fold forward, down into our second chaturanga. Move through whatever you need, whether it's knees, chest, chin, or an open flow. From here, we're gonna move into crescent pose, which is very similar to warrior one, except your back foot and your right, or your front and back foot are both facing forward and the back heel is lifted off. We wanna be in crescent lunge and we're gonna drop down to low lunge, which we're gonna lower our knee, drop our feet so that they're touching the mat 
And what I want you to do is kind of wiggle your front toes out a few inches. We really want to focus on feeling this stretch in our hips, keeping our hips facing forward. Everything should be in a nice neutral alignment, but we really want to focus on a nice 90 degree bend in our front leg, keeping our arms up. We're going to get a little flowy here, trying to build up some fire in our body. So on an inhale, I want you guys to flow back into a half split. So you're gonna lean back, your front leg is going to come towards you. It's gonna be nice and straight, almost like you're stretching your calves. You should feel this in the back of your calves, a little bit in your hamstring. Your front foot should be flexed towards you and just kind of keep your hands here. We're warming up, we're not trying to rush into this. And on an exhale, we're gonna move back into that low lunge. We're gonna do this again. So on an inhale, shift back into half split. If you want, you can keep your arms out. If you need a block to support yourself, feel free. On an exhale, shifting back into low lunge. We're gonna flip our back foot so that we start to get that grip. Moving back into crescent and then up to our first chair pose, our first Utkatasana. It's always a fun position, keeping your arms out, up, facing up, keep your shoulders relaxed and just stay here for a couple of breaths. I know it's challenging, but smile through the pain. And on an exhale, we're gonna step back to crescent on the opposite side and then drop to your knee, your right knee, flip your back foot. And again, move those toes a few inches out so we can really get into those hips, starting to open them up. Nice 90 degree bend. We can shift our hands by flipping them back, moving into half split on the left side, flexing those front toes, feeling that stretch in our hamstrings and our calves. And on an inhale, shifting back into low lunge. We're gonna do this again. Flipping back into half split, toes curled towards us, foot flexed, chest up and out. And again, moving back into low lunge. When you're ready, flip those back toes to kind of support yourself and push back up into crescent pose and then back up to Utkatasana, chair pose. Hold it here for three breaths, trying to get as low as you can while still keeping your chest up, shoulders back and relax, breathing. And on the exhale, forward fold, feeling that release. If you need, you can hug the backs of your legs, just letting that tension go. On an inhale, come to halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. We're gonna step back for another chaturanga. Move through your flow. Again, if you need to adapt, knees, chest, chin, moving into upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Stay here for a couple of breaths just to reset. That was a lot of movement on the body. So I just want everybody to Reset a little bit and take a couple of breaths. We're gonna be really opening up our hips tonight as well as our chest. So we wanna move at a very easy pace. That's gonna allow us to get into our deepest stretches. We're really focusing on the hips because that's where we hold a lot of our tension, a lot of our stress. And it's gonna be the biggest release. You're gonna feel amazing once we're done this practice. On an inhale, Lift your right leg up, bend your right knee, kind of open up those hips. You can circle it around if you want and thread that foot through to warrior one. Bringing your hands up. Now I have wide hips, so I like to keep my back leg out a little bit further. If you feel like you're in the same position as me, feel free to do that. Your arms should be up, shoulders should be relaxed if you feel like they're tense. I want you to just kind of give them a little circle and let them melt down your back. Really feel that bend into the front leg. It should be a nice 90 degree bend. And on an exhale, we're gonna open up to warrior two, keeping our arms 
nice and straight, looking forward. Our body should be kind of facing the wall in front of us. We're just gonna hang here and breathe. It's gonna be a little bit of a slow flow tonight, really getting deep into that stretching. On an inhale, we're gonna do reverse warrior, which you can just take your left hand, bend the back, reach over the top, frame out your front foot and kick that leg back to meet the other one and move through another flow. We're gonna do the same thing on the left side. So take it at your own pace when you're ready, lift up your leg, bend your left knee, Give your hips a little bit of a circle. And when you're ready, thread that foot through the center, opening up to warrior one on the left. Really pushing into that front knee. Again, if you need to take another step out for your hips to be in alignment, your back foot should be on a 45. Arms close to your ears, shoulders relax, and just breathe in. On an inhale, open up to warrior two. Again, straight alignment with the arms. Front leg is bent. Feeling this stance. I know it might hurt. You might be shuddering a little bit like me, but that's okay. That's where we grow. On an inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, frame out your hands. Drop your back, your front leg to meet your back and move through your chaturanga. We're going to do this again, but this time we're going to add a few more movements and asanas to this flow. So when you're ready, lift your right leg, bend it open, pull it through to warrior one. Stay here for a breath. Open up to warrior two. Stay here for a breath. Now I want you to straighten out that right leg. We're going into trikonasana, which is triangle pose. So all you want to do is straighten the right leg, lean a little bit forward and move your arms so that they're in a nice straight alignment. Be careful just immediately collapsing. That's where injury happens. If you need, this is where good support comes in with the blocks. So please feel free to use them. Like I said, let that ego go. Use the block to support you, whether it's on the lowest height, the medium or the highest, whatever's going to allow you to open up, that's what we want to do. If you don't have a block, you can use your shin as a guide, but be careful not to put all of your weight on your shin. We don't want to do that because then we collapse into the pose. So try to be weightless. You don't want to crunch your right side body. We just want to hold it here for a couple of breaths really feeling that deep twist, opening up our chest, feeling that stretch from our right leg all the way up through our left fingers. And on an inhale, we're gonna rise up. We're gonna shift our right foot so that our right and left feet are both parallel. We're facing sideways on our mat like you see me here. On an inhale, we're gonna lean back. You can hold your hips and we're gonna bend forward. We're just gonna take a nice deep stretch. If you feel like you can wiggle your feet out a little bit further and you wanna get deeper into the pose, feel free. We're just gonna be holding our ankles and folding over. If you feel like you need to get deeper, if you wanna drop your head to the mat, feel free and just place your hands where they need to go. On an inhale, we're gonna lift up. Now, you have a couple options here. We're gonna get a little bit more open and twisting in our mid bodies, our side bodies and our chest. So you can use the block if it helps or just listen to my cues. If you have this ability in you, I want you to take your right hand to your left ankle and open up your left arm. You should feel this in your hips as well as your chest. On an exhale, coming back to center, and we're gonna shift over to the right side, lifting our right arm up. Left arm is on our right ankle. Again, if you need a block and maybe you wanna stick to the center, that's fine as well. You're listening to your body, whatever serves its purpose. On an exhale, 
come to center. And what I want you to do is walk your way over to the left side of your mat. We're going in, into skinasana. So you want to keep your left foot completely flat and your right foot will turn up. And we just want to hold it here in a nice balance. This is again, stretching out our hips. You're probably going to feel a lot of tension, but just breathe through it. Don't forget to breathe. It's really important. And on an exhale, walk your way all the way back to where we started coming into that runner's lunge. Okay, hold it here, shift back into a plank position and move through a chaturanga. Meeting me in downward dog. If you need to take a break, feel free. If not, we're gonna do the same thing on the left with a few variations. So when you're ready, inhale your left leg up, bend your knee, open up and thread that foot through to warrior one. Opening up to warrior two. On an inhale, straighten that front leg. Remember, everything should be straight, including your arms. Use the block if you need. We're gonna shift forward and then drop our hands, moving into Trikonasana. When you're ready, inhale up. I want you to turn your left foot in so that it's parallel. I'm actually gonna flip around so you guys can see me, but we're gonna move into goddess. So with goddess, it's kind of the same concept as the wide-legged forward fold, except we're going to bend our arms into a cactus position, keeping both your feet facing forward parallel. And we just wanna bend into our legs. You can open them up a little bit. I actually, I want you to open them up wide, kind of facing the corners of your legs or your mat, bending your arms and just kind of start pulsing up and down. Okay, this is just gonna build up our muscle, build up our strength. On an inhale, I want you to shoot up to star. So straight legs, straight arms. Feel that stretch in our spine and then come back down into a deep goddess. We're gonna do a quick little ab series, bending to the right knee and then to the left. We'll do it five times on each side. So three, four, five, make sure you get both. And then one more deep squat of goddess, reaching all the way up to our star. We're gonna bend at the hips slowly and then turning our feet kind of in towards the center like they were starting out in parallel position. And we're gonna walk our hands to the right side this time for Skandasana on the right. You might hear some cracks like you just heard from me. That's normal, but again, if it's painful, don't push it. Your right foot should be completely flat. Your left foot should be flexed and facing up. You can stay here and support yourself on the ground. You can also take a bind if that's in your practice to really open up your hips. Again, whatever serves you best is what I want you to do. Just stay here and breathe. And on the exhale, push yourself back up to center. We're gonna turn towards the front, bring our back foot up, Stepping our feet hips with distance apart and just kind of hang loose for a little bit, feeling that forward fold. If you feel like you need to shake out your legs, that was a lot of stress, then go ahead and do so. Any area that you need to serve, that's what I want you to do. If you want, take your hands, clasp them on the back, rinse out your shoulders. When you're ready, place your hands on the ground. And I want you to step your feet out wide. I'm gonna shift so you guys can see what I'm talking about, but your feet should go kind of on the sides of the mat. We're gonna come down into Malasana. We're gonna really kind of stretch out those hips, get really deep into this pose. Your hips should be facing out towards the sides. You can rock back and forth like I am. If this is too much, 
use that block and place it underneath so that you have some support. You're free to move at your own pace. You're free to make sure that your body is doing what it needs. We don't wanna cause any stress or pain. So use the props or just adapt. And when you're ready, lift your legs back up, coming back into a forward fold. We're gonna halfway lift, drop our hands to the mat and go through another vinyasa. Okay. And when you're ready, I want you to walk your hands all the way up to your hand and then come to a seated position. I'm gonna shift again so you guys can see. Bring the soles of your feet to touch. We're gonna open up into a butterfly position. We're gonna just stay here with a nice straight back for the first couple breaths and just kind of reset our minds a little bit. There was a lot of opening, a lot of bending, a lot of hip work. So this is an easier hip opener where it's not causing a whole lot of stress on the body. Also keeping our back straight and just kind of breathing, feeling the posture. We're gonna to begin to kind of cool down. We got about a third of the class left. So we're kind of over the climax point. And now we're on our way to kind of getting our bodies, they're open. Now we're gonna give them some final stretches. And then we'll end with our favorite position, Savasana. So just stay here, a nice butterfly position. If you wanna get a little bit deeper, you can open up your feet like a book and use your elbows to kind of press down, keeping your back straight, your chest lifted, and just bend forward into this position. And when you're ready, come to a seated position. We're gonna move into a couple back openers. I'm gonna have you guys rest on your knees. We're gonna do hero's pose first. We've already done a couple of back bends, but I wanna kind of stretch out our legs a little bit. So in heroes, you're not seated on your legs. Your bottom is touching the floor. Your legs are on either side. Please listen to your body and go back as far as you can, but don't overdo it so that you cause injury. You can sit here and just breathe, or if you're feeling like you can get a little bit more flexible, you can slowly start to walk your hands back. Go as far as your body allows you. If you're feeling really loose, you can lower all the way down and put your hands over top of your head. You can cross your arms and your hands should be kind of grasping at your elbows. And we just want to breathe into this posture. Your knees should be as close as they can without causing any harm or damage to the body. And just stay here for a couple of breaths, breathing in through your nose and exhaling out through your nose as well. This is like a little counter stretch to all of our hip openers and straight leg positions that we were working with. If you have arthritis, this is a good posture to use in order to kind of flush out any areas of our joints that seem tight. This creates a lot of nice blood flow. So just keep breathing. And on an inhale, releasing your arms and lifting yourself back up to neutral position. We want to come up so that we're standing on our knees. You want to keep your hips or your legs hip width distance apart. So that's about two fists width, okay? We're gonna do two camel poses. Camel is a deep back bend, but again, go as far as you want. The way that we're gonna start is you're gonna take your hands and kind of place them so that they're on the bottom of the top of your, the bottom of your spine, just the fingertips there, kind of resting, kind of pulling your elbows in towards the center. And on an inhale, we're slowly gonna push our hips forward, drop our head so that our neck is open 
and just stay here as long as you can. The goal is three breaths. When you're ready, coming back up and just rest on your feet, taking a little bit of a pause. We're gonna do this again, and we're gonna try to get a little bit deeper into this back bend. But again, go where you want with this second one that we're doing, the camel pose. If you want, you can spread your knees a little bit wider and kind of point your toes almost like a triangle position that will help kind of get you more open, just a little bit more flexibility. But again, listen to your body and do it once. So when you're ready, Come up to a kneeling position on your knees. Again, if you want, you can spread your knees out a little bit wider, kind of moving your feet in towards the center like a triangle. You can keep your hands on your back and begin to back bend. Or if you want, you can start to be a little bit more flexible by dropping your hands to your ankles and really pulling and pushing your hips towards the front. You wanna push them forward and really open up your abdomen here and also open up your throat. So let's try to stay here for five breaths. This is challenging, but just focus on your breath and it will become much easier for you. Remember, push your hips forward and just breathe. Hold it here as long as you can. And when you're ready, slowly coming back up to that kneeling position, I want you guys to move into a nice, comfortable seated position where we're resting on our feet and we're gonna move into a child's pose. Just to kind of counter that motion, give our back a nice stretch. Try to walk your hands out as far as they can while still keeping your bottom rested on top of your feet and just breathe into your back. Feel your air circulating all the way down through your spine. We're kind of giving our body a little bit of a reset here. And on an inhale, walk your hands up and come to the center of your mat. You can face the middle like I am. What I'm gonna ask that you do is start by just keeping your legs straight out in front of you. We are gonna work with a couple stretches and straddle and kind of working our side bodies a little bit more, but we're just gonna give ourselves a nice little toe lock with our peace fingers, keeping our back nice and straight. We wanna push our chest forward, feeling that stretch in our lower back. So you should not have any type of curve. I'll show you what it looks like from the side, just so that we're all aware. So nice, straight, flat back, peace sign fingers to our big toes, locking our elbows in and down and pulling our chest forward. There should be no rounding in the spine. You should feel a nice little stretch in your lower back right here but it's important to keep the back nice and straight. See if you can get a little bit lower and still maintaining a straight back. Your elbows should be down and close to your body. And on an exhale, come back up and release. We wanna straddle out our legs so that our left and right leg is meeting the corresponding corners. We're gonna start by just walking our hands out to the center for a nice forward fold, feeling that stretch in our hips. Just kind of pausing here for a few breaths. On an exhale, walking ourselves back up to center. 
I want you to bend your left knee so that your left foot is touching the inside thigh of your right leg. We're gonna lift our arms up, twist our body and bend forward, grabbing our feet. If you can't reach, a strap often is a good way to wrap around your foot and kind of pull your weight forward. Again, we don't wanna curve and just collapse into the fold. We wanna keep a nice straight back. If you can touch your feet, you wanna again, bring your elbows nice and straight because our body should be twisted and kind of leaning over. So just begin to feel that stretch in our right leg. You should feel that in your calf, a little bit in your hamstring. On an inhale, I want you to sit up. We're gonna do something a little bit different too as far as the twist, just getting a little bit deeper into the stretch. I want you to take your right hand and I want you to lock your fingers around your big toe. You want to keep your arm on the inside of your right hand or your right leg so that way you can really get deep into this stretch and feel it as we go through the different poses. Okay, um, so lock that toe. Keep your arm flat on the ground. And what I want you to do is kind of bend and start to open up your chest so that it's looking straight up to the sky. So if you wanted to, you could seek your arm, your left arm straight up. And then what you're gonna do is slowly see if you can connect your left hand to your right toe without kind of collapsing here. You wanna to try to keep it as straight and open as possible, but it's okay. If it does start to feel like you're collapsing, just stay as close to open as you can. You'll feel this stretch in your left side body. You'll also feel it a little bit on your right. It's just getting us a little bit deeper into this pose. And on an exhale, coming back up to center, and we're gonna switch out our legs. So our left leg's gonna go out, our right leg's gonna tuck in. We're gonna take our left hand, Place it in front of our left leg, locking our big toe, kind of bending down, twisting open. Take our right hand up to the sky and bend it down as far as we can go. Now this is all I can do, so I'm gonna stop right here. I don't wanna cause any damage to my body or overstretching. I can feel this, especially right here. And that's exactly where we wanna feel it. You're just holding here. And when you're ready, coming back up to center. I want you guys to keep your legs together. Forward fold, we're gonna lock those toes, but this time we're gonna give a nice curl to our spine. Really trying to get your forehead to your knees. See how close you can get it. And when you're ready, I want you to make your way back down to a Savasana type position. We're not quite there yet, but we're on our way. So get comfortable. We're gonna try to unwind a little bit. So what I want you to do is bring your right knee into your right chest. Try to keep your right leg off of your ribs and aim more for your armpit. We just want to bring in that leg. We did a lot with stretching and opening up today. So we want to kind of circle that hip around and just kind of hold it there. We're going to be here for a couple of breaths on each side. And hopefully as you continue to breathe in, the stretch is going to get deeper. Your hips should be very open. So it almost should just melt into your right armpit. Holding it here. Thinking about that intention we set today. You guys have been doing amazing. Just focusing on our breath. And when you're ready, releasing that right leg, bringing that left knee into our chest, 
keep it off the ribs, more into our armpit area, but you can circle that hip around. And again, just hold it there, breathing into this, feeling this stretch, your hips should be really open at this point. Quieting our minds down. We're in our cool down phase. And on an exhale, release that left leg. I want you guys to bring both knees in, try to wrap your arms around them, giving your body a nice hug. I want you to massage out with a couple of rocks back and forth. That lower spine, the lower back, this should feel amazing. Get as tight as you can into a little ball, really bringing it in for a nice hug, feeling that tension. And then on an exhale, straighten your body out, laying on the floor. We're gonna bring that right leg back in for a little bend and do a nice supine twist. So when you're ready, moving that right knee into the chest, I want you to take your left hand and pull that knee across your body. You don't really wanna move the left side, you kinda of just wanna shift over. Your shoulders should not lift off of the ground and keep your right arm nice and straight. You wanna be looking over your right arm and just stay here for a few breaths. We're gonna hold this for a little bit. It's really breathing into this twist. The reason that we do twist in yoga is for detox purposes. It cleanses our organs, it cleanses our system. It gets rid of any and all disease that we might have in the body. So when we open up, when we stretch our hips, when we stretch our shoulders, our chest, but even these Crossbody twist. This is really going to help to release anything that we don't want. It's not serving us. Really breathing in. You should feel this in your arms. You should feel this in your side body. When you're ready, coming back to center, reset your legs, reset your arms. And on an inhale, bring that left leg in towards the center, bending the knee, taking our right arm, laying out our left hand so that it's nice and straight and just shifting that leg across our body. Shoulders should still be touching the mat, looking across at our left hand, really breathing into that stretch. See if you can twist just a little bit more. Embrace it. On an inhale, coming back. I want to do one more final pose before we get into Savasana, and that's happy baby. It's the best kind of pre Savasana pose there is. So you're going to bend your legs. You can either hold your hands on the outside of your feet or the inside, whatever serves your body the most. You can rock back and forth a few times, really kind of massaging out our back. It would be good too to straighten out one leg at a time. So straighten the right leg out. Just feel that flexion, bending the right leg, straightening out the left. Really feel that. I feel that in my hamstrings and my hip. And then bending both, straightening both legs for one last final stretch. And then I want you guys to just melt into your mats moving into savasana you've made it and now is the time to give yourself a few minutes to just reset i saved about 
five minutes for you guys to just be quiet, enjoy this time. We don't give ourselves enough quiet time, enough of a meditation to just let our body heal. So when you're ready, you can keep your feet as wide as the mat, opening up, hands up, palms facing the ceiling, and just kind of drift into a meditative state. Close your eyes and just continue to breathe. In through your nose and out through your nose. Focusing again on that intention. What was it that brought you here to this practice today? Let's not forget what that intention was and why we picked it. Using the breath to channel our energy. And just be still. Keeping your eyes closed, I want you to begin to wiggle your toes and your fingers, bringing a little bit of life back into your body. Wakening everything up, you can begin to move your wrists and your ankles slowly, fluidly. And when you're ready, shift onto the right side of your body for just a moment. And keeping your eyes, gently push yourself back up to seated position. We're going to end class the way that we began with a few cleansing breaths. So come to an easy, comfortable seated position. Palms up to receive or down for grounding, whatever best suits you. We're going to do this three times, breathing in the nose, but this time exhaling through the mouth to release a nice little lion's breath. So when you're ready on the inhale, breathing in and exhale, release through your mouth. On an inhale, breathing in and exhale out your mouth. And one more time, breathing in and exhale, letting it all go. One final breath, bring your hands to your chest in prayer position. I wanna thank you all for practicing with me today. It was an honor. I hope this practice served you and made you feel that much better. We're all capable of a lot of things and we've been juggling a lot this year. And every day it seems like it can just get that much more challenging, but the key to getting through it is to remember our breath and just quieting down our minds so that we can reset. I wish you guys all a great rest of your week and a happy Thanksgiving. Bow your heads in honor to honor this practice today. 
Namaste. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed it. This will be recorded and posted later. Um, I love the Therapy Travelers community, so I appreciate you all joining tonight. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I I am sweating and breathing. I thank you for the knowledge. <laughs> it's welcome. really, really great. Thank you so much. Everyone be really safe. Perfect. Thank we you. will get through this. We will get yes, through this. Will. Yes, we will. That's beautiful. Yes. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a great night, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Happy right, Thanksgiving. Thank